The next thing that I want to add is a panel on the side of the game that will add all the buttons. So to do that, first of all, I need to increase the width of my game window. If I go back into my constants file, I've already got my screen width and height defined. In addition to those, I'll create another variable called side underscore panel, and I will set this to 300 pixels. I'm not going to change the width and height because that's just based on the size of my map. Instead, I'm going to go back into the main file where we create the game window, and I will just add it onto the width here. So I will add that C dot side underscore panel. So if I run this again, I now have a bigger window. Now we can populate that window with some buttons. So before we create them, I'm going to load in a couple of button images. I will add a comment up here to separate them to say buttons. And the first one will be the by turret image. So this will be pg.image.load. And then we'll have a look at where that one is. So it's inside assets, images, and then buttons. So there's a whole bunch of buttons in here. We'll say assets, images, buttons. And the one I need for now is by underscore turret dot PNG. And as always, we just need to convert at the end. So with that one loaded, let's load in the cancel button. We'll just change this to cancel and change the name to cancel PNG. Now I can create the actual button class. So I've created this empty button.py file. So just like all the rest of them, they're all housed in the same folder altogether. And we'll begin by importing pygame as PG. Then I'll create my class of button. It doesn't need to take anything inside the brackets here. Next, I'll create a constructor. So I'll say def init. And the only arguments I need for now are the X and Y coordinates and the image that we're going to use. Now I can assign these to self. We'll say self.image is image. Self.rect is then derived from that image. So just like we've done before, we use the get underscore rect function. Then self.rect.top left. So we'll position it based on the X and Y coordinates, and that will be the top left corner of the button. There's a few more things we'll add to this, but for now, that's all that the constructor needs. Next, we'll create the draw method, and this needs to take the argument of self and the surface. Now, there are a few steps to working with buttons. First of all, we need to get mouse position. Then we're going to need to check mouse over and clicked conditions. And lastly, we're going to need to draw button on screen. So I've just kind of laid out the structure using comments for now, and now we can start filling it in with code. Well, to get the mouse position, we're already familiar with that one because we did this previously. So it's pg.mouse.get underscore pause. That will give me the X and Y coordinates of the mouse. And then I need to check whether that mouse is hovering over the button. Well, the button has a rectangle, so I can simply check for a collision. We'll say if self.rect.collide point, which will check for collision between the rectangle and a single point of x and y coordinates, and we pass in the mouse coordinates, well, if that's met, then that means that the mouse is currently hovering over the button. Then the next check is to see if it's being clicked. We'll say if pg.mouse.get underscore pressed, and we pass in the index zero because we're looking for a left click only. If that's the case, then we know that we've clicked on the mouse. And for now, I'm just going to put pass in here. So we'll come back and fill this in in a second. And lastly, we just need to draw this button. So we'll say surface dot blit self dot image and self dot rect. And that creates the button class. So we'll go back into the main file. And first of all, we need to import that class. We'll say from button import button with a capital B. And then we can start creating instances of this. We'll go all the way down to where the game loop begins. And just above that, where we're creating the groups and so on, I'll say create buttons. So the turret underscore button, this will be for creating new turrets, is an instance of the button class. Now we need to add in the coordinates here. So I've based this on screen width because that's the width of our playing area, the map. So from that, if I add 30 pixels, then we're gonna move just inside of that new panel on the right hand side. The Y coordinate is 120 and the image is the by underscore turret image. Now I can copy this down and create a second button, which is going to be the cancel button. So the coordinates are going to be 50 on the X, then 180 on the Y, and I just need to change the image to cancel image. 
Okay, let's just test this and make sure there's no errors. Okay, so everything's loading in fine. The images are coming in and we create the instances. And now we can start calling the draw methods for these buttons. But first, I just want to tidy up this while loop a little bit. So I want to create separate sections. I'll do that using these comment blocks. So just after the clock tick, I'm going to paste in this bit to say updating section. And then below that, I'll say drawing section. And then I'll just move all these things around. So this is all correct. This falls into the draw section, but this needs to move from here. So I'm going to cut this out and put it up into the updating section. Now I can go down here underneath all of these draw methods and add a comment to say draw buttons. So the first one is a button for placing turrets. And this one was my turret underscore button. So I'll just call the draw method and I'll pass the screen as the drawing surface. And then underneath that, I'm also going to call my cancel button. So it's cancel underscore button dot draw onto the screen. Now I'm going to move these around. So that's why I've not added a comment for this one yet. So I'll just run this and test it to see everything is working fine. I've got the buttons coming up. I can't click on them yet, but we're going to do that next. If we go back into the button class, all we need to do here is add in a variable that's going to detect whether the button has been clicked. So at the very beginning of the draw method, I will create a variable called action and I will set it to false. So by default, this is always going to return a false value. But then in here, where I've got this pass, I'm now going to change this to update the action to true. This means that if we do click on the button, then this variable becomes true. And lastly, we need to return that variable back out of the function. So we go to the bottom here and we'll say return action. Now, because this function has a return, when I call this draw function, I can actually check what it comes back with. So for example, this can now have an if statement at the beginning. So if that is true, i.e. that action variable becomes true, we can just print something out. We can say new turret. And likewise, if the cancel button is drawn or clicked on, then that will return true and I can say print cancel. So if we run this now, that one says new turret and that one says cancel. So that's working correctly, but you notice that although I click it once, it seems to return it many times over. We obviously don't want that in some cases. So some of the buttons will need just a single click, while others will need to be a click and hold kind of button. So first of all, we're going to make all of the buttons single click, and then we'll add the click and hold option. To make it single click, we simply need to add another trigger variable here. So we'll say self.clicked is equal to false. This is inside our constructor. So by default, as soon as the button is created, this variable is set to false. Then whenever we do click the button, as well as setting the action to true, we also set self.clicked to true. But once that happens, once this has been clicked and set to true, we need to make sure that this can't then happen again. So that means that within here, once we've checked that we've hovered over the button, we also need to add a second check to the click. So if it's been clicked and self.clicked is false, then it's okay to click on this button. But if self.click has been set to true, that means we've already clicked this button. So we don't want to run this code again. So let's try this again. And I'll click it once. Now if I keep clicking it, nothing happens. It doesn't detect it anymore. Same with cancel. I can click it once, but no more. So it's partially working. But what I now need to do is reset this variable as soon as I let go. So we'll add a second check here. It will say if pg.mouse.get underscore pressed index zero, which is the left mouse button. If that's now not clicked, if that's returning zero, then it means that we've clicked and we've let go. In that case, this trigger variable can be set back to false. So we'll go back in here and now I can click over and over. If I click and hold, nothing happens, but I can release and then click again. So we've created these single click buttons. But I do want the option of being able to have a button that's click and hold. So let's go back into the button and just add a little bit more to it. Into the constructor, we'll add another variable, which is self.singleClick. And this is going to be dependent on the button. So we actually want to pass that in as an argument. So I'll add another argument, which is going to be a single click. So when I create a button, I pass either true or false as an argument at the end and then I can assign it here. So this will be single click. Then we go down to where we're detecting the click and just before this section here. So we'll detect action, we'll set that to true. And then underneath that, I'll add a comment to say 
if button is a single click type, then set clicked to true. And underneath that, we'll just say if self dot single click. So basically, if it's a single click button, then we set that variable, that trigger to true. But if it's not a single click button, then this variable is relevant because then we can just keep holding it down. So let's go back. Now, of course, I've added in this new argument at the top. So I need to make sure that when I create my instances of these two buttons, I pass that in. So let's just make them both different. The first one will make a single click button. So the third button will pass true. The cancel button will pass false. I run this again. So the buy button, I can only click once. I can't click and hold. The cancel button, I can click and hold and it'll just keep registering. So this gives me some differentiation between the two buttons. I only want them to both to be single click. So I'll set this one to true as well. Now that we've got buttons working, the next thing I want to do is to actually use these buttons to allow me to place turrets, because right now I can just click on the screen and I'll place turrets, but I want that to only be possible when I've clicked this buy turret button. But there's a few things that we'll need to do to make that happen. So first of all, I'm going to go back up above my game loop. And just before I start loading in my images, I will have a section here, which we'll see with a comment game variables. This will grow over time, but for now, I only need one, which is placing underscore turrets. And I'll set that to false to begin with. So this is going to act as a trigger to determine if we're placing turrets or if we're not. Now I can go back into my game loop and where I call these buttons, instead of printing out new turret, what I'm actually going to do is set that trigger to true. So as soon as I've clicked on that new turret button, this variable changes to true. And then I'll add a little comment here to say, if placing turrets, then show the cancel button as well, because I actually don't want this cancel button to be shown all the time. I want it to appear when we're placing turrets. So here we add an if statement to say if placing turrets is equal to true. And then I can indent this section and I can replace this print statement with a reset of that trigger. So if I click on the cancel button, then this trigger changes back to false. So let's just try this out. The button has disappeared. I click by turret, it reappears, click cancel, and it goes away again. But now I would like to also use this variable to determine whether or not I can place turrets on the screen, because right now I can still click on them. Even though I haven't activated this by turret, I can still place turrets. Now that, if you remember, is actually handled through the event handler. So I have this section here that checks for this mouse button down event, and it checks if we've left click. And at the very end of it, we call this create turret function. Well, I can just put this inside another if statement. I can say if placing turrets is true, in that case, we can create a turret, but otherwise we're not going to. So now when I click, nothing happens. If I go into buy turret, now I can place them. If I cancel, I can't place anymore. And the last thing that I would like to do is make it so that once I've clicked on buy turret, I can actually see this little turret that's attached to the mouse. So it will let me know visually that I'm in the mode for placing turrets. And to do that, we've already got the image loaded. It's that cursor turret image. So I go back up to where I've got this placing turrets true section, and I'll just expand it a little bit. I'll add a comment to say show cursor turret. So I'll create a rectangle from it first of all. I'll say cursor underscore rect is equal to cursor turret dot get underscore rect. So we'll get a rectangle from the image. Cursor position is the mouse position. So pg dot mouse dot get underscore pause. And then we position the rectangle at those coordinates. So we'll say that cursor rect dot center is equal to cursor pause. And now we can draw that image. We can say screen dot plate cursor underscore turret and cursor rect. So we'll run this again. When I click on buy turret, you can now see this little turret appears on the mouse. So this just lets me know visually that this is the mode that I'm in and I can drop these turrets down. But as a little check, you notice that when we go over here, the turrets are still there. I don't actually want it to be shown when I leave the game area and I go into this menu sidebar. So we'll add another little if statement here before we blit it. We'll say if cursor position index zero, which is the X coordinate, is less than or equal to the screen width, well, then it's okay to draw it, but otherwise we don't want to draw it. So I click by, there's no cursor. Move over here, and now I have a turret. Go back, and it's gone. And when I cancel, the whole thing goes away again. 
We will add in more buttons as the game progresses, but for now this will allow us to proceed on to the next step.